Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Edita Maciołek. I'm representing InnovaDerm Research, a group um, with the Clinical Research Unit in Montreal, Canada, and as well the international CRO specializing in uh, dermatology. Our clients are mostly um, small and mid-sized biotech and pharma companies. For most of them, um, con a, a conduct of clinical trial in European Union uh, is something new. Uh, so please imagine right now with, uh, with all those changes with uh, EU CTR and uh, harmonized submission process via uh, clinical trial uh, information system, right? So. Because of that, uh, for today's webinar, I've prepared the case study, first steps in CTIS. Um, so our sample company will be small pharma from US, no previous experience with clinical trials in uh, EU. They have a brand new clinical trial and they want to go to uh, some European countries. Uh, targeted submission date is February 2023. So the company is asking themselves uh, what to do first with this entire CTIS. So let's go and check. Um, from my perspective, uh, what I would say or suggest is to go to uh, EMA website because um, there is a special part dedicated to clinical trial information system. There is a lot of uh, training, training programs, uh, video, as well as uh, uh, live uh, sessions with Q and A's. I say sometimes that the amount of information there is overwhelming, even overwhelming. Um, so you need to go through, uh, pick something for you and, and just start. Uh, uh, for the purpose of this presentation, you will see, and, and I confirm that the main source of the information was EMA website. Uh, the information from there is supported with my uh, private print screens. CTIS is structured, we know, um, or it was set several times. So quickly, uh, we'll go through this slide. So uh, on CTIS, uh, CTIS portal, we have a sponsor workspace uh, and authority workspace. Those two workspaces are um, um, mm, uh, restricted areas and uh, can be accessible only for registered users. And of course, there is a public, a general public uh, websites uh, with a clinical trial database. How to get started with CTIS? Uh, First step that Ima is uh, telling us is to decide the company, the organization should decide which approach for user management they want to use. Uh, is it the clinical trial centric approach, which serves the needs of small organizations and academic sponsors, which may be, uh, which may initiate clinical trials on ad hoc basis? or it will be organization-centric approach uh, that serves the needs of organizations that run multiple clinical trials on a regular basis. For more information about those approaches and what's the difference, please refer to EMA training module, how to create a clinical trial. It is a, um, a film um, uh, posted on, um, on YouTube. So you can see uh, what's the difference. Basically, the approach is related. How are we going to create clinical trial application in the system? Um, so um, EMA is emphasizing our organizations to, to go through the organization-centric approach, meaning to, to register everywhere to assign a high level administrator and to be really the, the manager, the man on the seat uh, within EMA applications. Next step, step number two, 
is to check if anybody in our organization has already EMA uh, account uh, credentials or is using EMA applications, UDRA links, SPOR, IRIS, UDRA vigilance. Uh, this um, because the same credentials that I use for UDRA vigilance, uh, vigilance um, uh, they will let you uh, register, log in to CTIS. So basically the same EMAC credentials can be used uh, throughout all the applications. But of course, in our case, uh, the company doesn't have any experience, doesn't have any employee who might have access to any of the EMA applications. That's why the company our sample example uh, company needs to go and create EMA, needs to go to EMA account management, create EMA account and go through the registration process. So this slide is uh, showing you uh, what steps uh, you need to take to create EMA account. Uh, you need to go to EMA account management platform. So this is totally different uh, web page. Uh, you go there, you click on create an EMA account, you complete a self-service registration form, then you receive a notification to confirm all the data and that it is you who is reg registering there. Uh, and basically, in my experience, it was within one business day, um, you receive your EMA account credentials. So this is one thing. Now, uh, the step number three in organization-centric approach is to check if your organization exists in um, organization management system, OMS. If not, to add your organization to uh, OMS. So this is another platform. So you have to uh, search for SPOR organization management system. Yeah, link is covered here. Uh, you can search for organization without logging in, right? So you can um, uh, search organization, you will receive a list of uh, companies. Please be careful when, when looking for company, um, simple, um, first of all, looking for pharma or biopharma, it gives you a lot of uh, results. Um, so it's better to, I don't know, to, to uh, also search by country or city to minimize the, the number of results. But if still your company um, is not present on the list, you have to log in uh, to the system using the same EMA credentials you just received. And um, then you will have possibility to click on a button, request new organization. And this way, going through all steps, you will uh, create, you will ask to create uh, your organization in OMS system. Important note, here, um, you will have to upload a document confirming legal status of the organization. Uh, for example, I don't know, a statement or a certificate from enterprise register. In Poland, for example, it would be um, down, uh, KRS downloaded from the system, right? Okay, so Let's say we already have our EMA account credentials and your organization is already um, set up in OMS. So exists in OMS. And that now you have to align yourself with the organization. And if it's, if it's you who will be um, the user, the super user uh, for, for organization, then you should request uh, access uh, for organization. So you are you going back to your EMA account management portal, you log in with your EMA credentials, and then on homepage, you will see several topics. And this one is to request access for organization. Uh, 
through the form you will go uh, once uh, once uh, ask for to to re start the request you will go through several steps a previous one was of course uh to select your organization so there will be search field uh, if you register, if you the day before, if you registered your organization, the, you will have the OMS ID number. So I suggest when you once you have the uh, OMS ID number that you use for search uh, uh, this number. Uh, you take the organization you want access to, and then uh, you move to next step, which is select role. So basically, if once you are here, uh, there are a lot of roles, different roles for different different applications available for you. Um, what I did first was uh, to request SPORE industry super user role. Yes, because uh, I'm representing CRO. Uh, I was requesting to create the organization account in OMS and it was me assigned uh, and authorized to be the, uh, the super user. So first of all, I requested SPORE industry super user role. Uh, which probably, uh, apart from CRO, clinical sites will have to uh, to assign uh, this kind of person. But for this presentation, we are talking about a uh, sponsor who will be managing the clinical trials in cities. So the person there should search for CTIS, high level sponsor administrator role. So you tick here, that this is the role you need. Um, one thing to add, uh, high level sponsor administrator and super user administrator. These are the roles that will be able to assign roles to other employees. And also if uh, any uh, anybody will ask for a role for the trial or for the company, uh, it will be you who will receive notification and the request, and it will be you who will be approving those. So you will be managing the access rights and the list of people who has access to a particular application. Uh, okay. Next step is additional info. And here again, important information, you will not complete this step till you submit some document that affiliate, affiliates you with the company. So um, luckily, EMA is providing uh, a template. Uh, you, you can find it um, on, uh, where was it? Uh, OMS or EMA account management system in documents tab. No, sorry, can go to documents, no, sorry, on a SPORE organization management system. Uh, in organization tab, we were looking for uh, organization. And here in documents tab, you will find guidance, uh, templates, instructions and everything. So in this tab, when you go to Z2 SPORE super user affiliation template, you can download it, complete and ask your the president of the company or a CEO, whoever is, uh, let's say, per default authorized to represent the company to give you to give the authorization to be the super user to you. And then this document uh, should be um, uploaded here. And this actually, and then you uh, submit the request. So uh, this will this will end the process of requesting a role for you. And last step is, of course, what was already mentioned. Please ensure your medical products are registered in uh, Extended Udra Vigilance Medicinal Product Dictionary. And after that. We are ready to log into CTIS. Um, yeah, uh, here you can find um, uh, the login to sponsor workspace area or uh, competent authority uh, uh, work work area workspace. Uh, so we log in. 
and we are ready to create clinical trial application in clinical trials. Uh, so basically, um, this is the home page. Here you have a button to create a trial, but uh, this was more or less um, explained before. Uh, what I want to say uh, to finish my presentation is that under your name, uh, there are uh, two tabs. One of them is personal profile. And um, you may receive a request from the system or notification notice uh, to uh, update your employer information, right? Because CTIS will be related to your name. But when you go to personal profile and click on update employer information, uh, uh, your profile will be affiliated with the uh, with uh, organization. Uh, each time you need to um, find for organization. So if you want to add employer uh, or when you tick on new trial, uh, the, the, the window will pop out asking you to search for an organization. So once again, uh, if you know that organization exists in OMS, use the um, OMS uh, ID number. If not, search using uh, uh, criteria. Uh, if you cannot find your um, organization using the, those filters, try with different keywords. Uh, and, uh, and final information for you is that, uh, uh, especially in, uh, it is related with uh, city-centric approach, that organization can be added from CTI, CTIS uh, level. So because uh, I, uh, in this in those slides, I showed you step by step where to go and what to uh, how to register. Uh, but if you have your email account, you log into CTIS, and you want to add employer information or create new trial, you anyway will be able to add uh, organization from this perspective from from CTIS level. Uh, but then, of course, no roles will be assigned to you or uh, super user roles. You, you will just add the organization to be able to create new trial. Uh, the steps uh, of adding new organization, starting from CTIS, it will direct you again to OMS um, and you will have to go through all uh, the same steps. So just for you to know there are two ways to add organization and that's actually was it <laughs> thank you very much